Hey everyone, welcome back. If you are in debt and not sure how best to tackle the issue, then stick around. That's what we'll be going through in today's video. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So first off, let's clarify something, and that is not all debt is actually a problem. Some debts can be a necessary tool to help improve our financial well-being. For example, getting a student loan to go to university, getting a mortgage to purchase your property, or even getting a loan to finance your startup or company. Usually the interest rates on these are manageable, and as I mentioned, are typically used on initiatives that eventually better your financial situation. This is known as managed debt. When debt becomes unaffordable or they have high interest rates, that's when it really becomes a problem. And this is known as, funnily enough, problem debt. Examples of these can include credit cards, personal loans, car financing, overdrafts, store credit cards, buy now and pay later schemes, etc., etc. Now having these types of debts can get you into a tricky spot because the interest rates associated to these are a lot higher and you can find yourself spending a lot of money trying to dig yourself out of an interest ridden mess. And it will be this type of debt situation which we'll be tackling in this video. So where should you start? So the way I've structured this topic is in two parts. In today's video, we're going to be going through a walkthrough on how to understand your debt and go through two popular methods to tackle the debt and another special method, which I may or may not have just invented. The jury is still out on that one. And then check out part two of this video, which will be going through additional methods and tips to make debt less expensive to you. You know what's also not expensive? Hitting that subscribe button. Well, first off, in order to tackle the problem at hand, you need to have a clear understanding of the situation at play. So before you do anything, you need to write down all of the debts that you have. For each debt item, you need to write down the amount you've borrowed or the amount that's outstanding, the interest rate on the loan, and the minimum repayments you have to make on the loan as well. These pieces of information are crucial to paint the full debt picture. And luckily for you, I've created a free spreadsheet which we'll be using throughout this video to help manage your debt. Looking over at the spreadsheet now, you can see that the areas in yellow is where you have to input the information I just spoke about. So in this example, I've put down a Santander credit card and the balance outstanding on this is 5,000 pounds. And the APR, which just means the interest rate charged for borrowing is 20.9%. And the minimum repayments on this card is 165 pounds and 40 pence. As soon as you fill in these three pieces of information, the spreadsheet will automatically calculate the following two columns. Under this minimum header, we first have the loan total, which means if we just stuck to the minimum repayments on this credit card, we would pay over 7,000 pounds to pay off the loan, with 2,000 pounds of that just being put towards the interest alone. If you click on this plus button at the top, you can also find some extra useful bits of information, such as how many months or years it would take to pay this off. So in this case, that would take us 43 months or 3.6 years. You can also understand the interest to amount borrowed ratio. In this example, it shows that the amount of interest we pay on this loan will be equivalent to 43% of the original amount, which is crazy high when you put it from that perspective. So take a copy of the spreadsheet and spend time going through all the debts that you have and write down all the information required. Once you have done that, you will know where you stand and then we can move on to step two. So the next step is that we want to attack this debt list that we've just created with additional cash to make sure we are on the path to being debt free. And depending on how dire your situation is, the more money and time we will need to tackle it. So to understand what this extra cash is, the next thing we need to understand is to assess where our money is going. And we can do that by creating a budget. Luckily for you that on this spreadsheet under the tab budget, I have sorted this out all for you. So use this spreadsheet to write down all your incomes and outgoings and be as precise as possible. And to make it extra helpful, I've split the outgoings into two categories. We have your fixed outgoings. So these are the payments you are obliged to make no matter what. I put down a few examples like rent or mortgage, utility bills, the minimum repayments on your debt, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have your variable outgoings, and these are the costs which you are not obliged to pay, such as going out to restaurants, holidays, etc, etc. The reason why I've split it into these categories is because if you need to start making adjustments, starting with your variable costs is a good place to begin. So spend time filling this out and be as precise as possible. Once you've filled it all in, you've noted your income and all your outgoings, you will know how much you have left to spare at the end of each month. And it will be this money that will be the main source of funds to tackle our debt problem. 
Also, while going through this exercise, you should really take this as an opportunity to see if you can increase the amount of money that's left over by really scrutinizing your costs. Look for opportunities by outright removing some of the costs or by being more frugal. If your debt situation is really bad, it will require a significant shakeup in your budget and that will likely mean a shakeup in your lifestyle too. You can also look at increasing your income, for example, by selling stuff around the house, getting another job or starting a side hustle. If you are in a situation where the costs are more than your income, then your main focus should be on how to turn things around because if this is the case, there is no coming out of this in a good way. So now that you know how much money you have left over from your budget, the next thing you want to do is create a standing order so when you get paid, or at least close to when you get paid, you will automatically make an additional payment to one of the debts in your list. Because we are going to be tackling these debt items one at a time. But remember, we want to ensure we are always paying at least the minimum payments for all the other debts too. That way we avoid any penalty fees and a bad credit score. Now comes the decision on what debt to pick. Let's head over to my spreadsheet to help us figure this out. Let's say that according to our budget, at the end of each month, you have 300 pounds left over. You've noticed I've added a few more examples onto our debt list. So I've added another credit card, a car financing loan, and two other personal loans, which means in this example, we are in debt of almost 35,000 pounds. But I should mention that all these numbers are simply just made up. This is just to demonstrate how it can be used. Let's go over to the right hand side to the how much to add section and let's put in how much money we have left over in our budget, which in this example, we will use 300 pounds. What this does is that it adds 300 pounds to all of our minimum payments and then it recalculates everything for us. That way we can begin to understand what might be the best debt to tackle first. So we can now see that the new loan total for the Santander would be 5,500 with almost 600 per pounds being paid towards interest, which is a significant drop than if we just stuck to paying the minimum repayments. Again, if you open up the plus sign, you can find extra information on the month, year remaining and interest to debt ratio. But the most useful bit is if we look over at the savings column and I'll go through these one by one. So across all the debts that we have, if we made the extra 300 pound payment, you can see that the Santander credit card will give us the biggest interest saving of 1,500 pounds, with the lowest saving being 370 from the car finance loan. From a time perspective, we can see that personal loan two will be paid off the quickest in just six months, and personal loan one will be the longest in 22 months. But if we actually look at how many months were saved by making these extra payments, we saved the most time with personal loan number one with 40 months saved. And again, the car loan being the least impactful at just 14 months. And finally, we can see the percentage saved. So this looks at the saving on the interest compared to the loan total if we just stuck to the minimum repayments. The top three are actually fairly close, but the one with the most saving does go to the HSBC credit card with a saving of 24.9%. Now you may be questioning why the highest is actually not the Santander card because that was the highest interest saved. And the reason for this, if we look at the two credit cards is that we actually borrowed more with the Santander, but the interest is higher on the HSBC card. So when we look at interest savings as a percentage of the total, HSBC wins over Santander in this case. So that's lots of really useful information. So do spend time going through and really make sense of it all. At this point, you now have everything you need to decide which one you should tackle first. Let's take a quick step back and assess some of the strategies we can take. We will look at two popular strategies and a strategy I believe I may have designed myself. I'm actually only kidding. I'm sure it exists somewhere and probably already has a name, but I actually couldn't find it. So for now, I will be calling it the madness method when we do go through it. But yeah, let me know if my strategy exists or if I can claim it as my own. So first off is the avalanche method, which is a strategy, which means any extra cash that we have should be used to tackle the debt with the highest interest rate or APR first. Remember, we should be making minimum repayments on all debts regardless. From a money point of view, the avalanche method makes the most mathematical sense as this will save you the most money on your interest payments. If we now go back to my spreadsheet and over to the methods tab, you can see that this clever little thing has already calculated it for us. So according to the avalanche method, we should be tackling the HSBC credit card first as this has the highest interest rate at 23.9% with the personal loan number one being the lowest priority at 3.9. Looking at the pros for this method with the first one being is that this will actually make us realize the most amount of savings as by tackling the highest interest rate first, we are paying off our debt in the cheapest way possible. And pro number two is that not only is this the cheapest way, it is also the fastest way. 
Debt with the highest APR usually have the highest minimum payments associated to them. So once you get the most expensive one out of the way, you will be able to tackle the next debt with even more cash because you've realized a huge saving in your monthly cost. Looking at the cons, however, and it's probably an underestimated con, because although this method does save us the most money, it actually requires a lot of discipline. My examples in the spreadsheet, perhaps and we don't demonstrate this in the best way possible, but imagine if you had a debt which had the highest APR and the highest amount borrowed too. It would take a significant amount of cash and time to clear this one. And without the right discipline or mindset, this can cause demotivation in a person and increase your chances of missing a payment or two. And as we know, by doing this, this can actually increase the amount of debt we have and negatively affect our credit score. The next method is something called the snowball method, which means we use any extra cash that we have to tackle the debt with the lowest amount of money outstanding. This may not make the most mathematical sense as normally you would save more money using the avalanche method. However, you will clear your first debt at the fastest rate possible, which means you will realize some extra cash savings to then tackle the next smallest debt on your list. If you go back to my spreadsheet, you can see under the snowball method, which debt has been ranked first. And that would be personal loan number two, with the smallest debt at 2000 pounds and car financing loan being the last on the list at 14,000. If you look at the pros of the snowball method, the key positive is that because you will be tackling the smallest debt first and therefore ticking one of the debts off your list in the fastest way possible, you're more likely to stay motivated because you are seeing results a lot sooner. It's almost like when you are at work and you make your to-do list for the day and then you're halfway through the day and then you realize you actually still have a lot of pieces left unticked and you still have to do them, it can be a bit deflating. So what do we do? We write down easy tasks or simple tasks that we literally just did, like book annual leave, only to cross it off immediately to make us feel better. Look, I know we all do it. I certainly do it all the time and it doesn't necessarily make the most sense, but somehow it makes me feel a bit more motivated to keep going. That's basically the snowball effect. Looking at the cons, and it is that this method isn't the cheapest, nor is it the quickest way to clear your debt. That would be the avalanche method. And finally, moving on to the madness method, which unless someone tells me otherwise, it was designed by yours truly. Now the method actually encompasses aspects of both the avalanche and snowball method. So any extra money we have should be put towards the best, smallest debt and interest saving combination. The thought process behind this was that actually, if you look at my list of debts, some of the debts are quite similar in size and in interest rates. So if you are someone who wanted to go via the snowball method, the benefit of paying the smallest debt might not be as hugely beneficial if the second smallest debt is of similar size and has a higher interest rate. You following me? So for example, let's look at my list of debts. The snowball method will tell us to tackle personal loan number two first because it is the smallest. But my madness method tells us that we should actually be focusing on the HSBC credit card instead. Why? Well, if we look at the debt outstanding on this one, it is just £1,000 more than the Santander one, but it has a higher rate of interest. And the combination of these two is the reason why the madness method would say it is more beneficial to pay that one first instead, because it is still a short amount of time. So this would take us eight months to pay off rather than six, but we will realize a saving of 24.9% rather than 20.85%. If we head over to the methods tab and we look at the madness column, it will tell us which debts are best to tackle first from that logic's perspective. And as you can see, it is fairly similar to the snowball method. The only difference being the first option. So looking at the pros, and the first one is that it can be more advantageous than the snowball method, especially for those that have similar sizes across their debts. If this is the case, this method will probably save you more money than the snowball method, as we have that element of balancing off the debt size against their respective interest rate. The next positive is that if the rank is different to the snowball effect, if the months to pay off the loans are not too dissimilar from one another, then we will still remain motivated as we should see results soon enough although it will not be the quickest compared to the snowball effect. Looking at the cons, again, like the snowball, this is not going to be the cheapest, nor is it the quickest way to pay off all our debts. That again, sticks with the avalanche method. So what should you do? So there isn't actually one answer for everyone as the correct method is dependent on your own situation. My suggestion, and I should state I am not a financial advisor, so please do seek out professional help if needed. But my suggestion is to not underestimate the motivation needed to pay off debt, especially if you have a lot of it. If you are someone with a lot of debt, start looking at the snowball method or madness method first and get the first couple of debts knocked off the list. That way you will quickly be able to realize some extra cash to tackle the next one even harder. 
Also with the debt and budget spreadsheets, please don't make this a one-off exercise. Regularly check in to make sure you are going in the right direction. It's always worth redoing the exercise, especially when you pay off one of your debts. Maybe you now have 350 pounds now to spare. You update the pieces of information on the debt spreadsheet to find out which one will be the next on the chopping block. Cool, so that is part one. Let me know if you do have any comments down below. Next week, we will be looking at ways to make your debt cheaper. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Bye. Bye.